You've got to understand, I chased these things for many years. I was a storm chaser. And so people now call me to find out what to do, because I can read these things. And as a matter of fact, as a TV reporter 15 years before, I predicted everything that was going to happen in Hurricane Katrina in a special report called When the Big One Hits. Lake Punchatrain is great on a calm day, but when the wind blows and a storm moves in, it kicks up quickly. In many ways, it's like a big bowl filled with water. The wind blows and that water starts to slosh back and forth. And when a hurricane comes, the bowl is literally tipped, spilling all of that water into the city. When the big one comes, that could be our worst nightmare. The worst thing that could happen to the Nine Parish metropolitan area is for a slow-moving level five hurricane to approach from the mouth of the river. It would dump eight to 12 feet of water into areas west of the river. It would dump up to 15 feet of water into areas east of the river and along the north shore. And it would dump up to 20 feet of water into the east bank of St. John, St. Charles, Jefferson, and all of Orleans Parish. In areas with 12 feet of water, one out of every 4,900 people would be killed. 63% of the homes would be damaged, and 47% of all businesses would be damaged. In areas with 15 feet of water, one out of every 850 people who stay behind would be killed. Home damage would reach 63%. Commercial damage would reach 55% and major evacuation routes would be destroyed. And in areas with 20 feet or more of water, one out of every 100 people not evacuated could be killed. Homes would be totally destroyed, and so would businesses. All of the levees in our area have given many people a false sense of security. The experts say these levees may hold back the tidal surge from a level three hurricane like Betsy. But in a level four or a level five hurricane, the waves would top the levees, flooding everything below. Imagine homes in Metairie looking like this. Some experts say it would take a minimum of 72 hours to evacuate the entire nine parish metropolitan area. But at 72 hours out, picking a point of landfall is nearly impossible for hurricane forecasters. Nine out of 10 times, if they predict a landfall, they're wrong. For example, if a hurricane is passing between Florida and Cuba, entering the Gulf at 10 miles an hour, it would still be 68 hours away. What do you think the likelihood is of anyone accurately picking a point of impact? You see, it's a problem of time management. If you wait until you know a hurricane is definitely going to hit, it's too late to evacuate everyone. So it's not as though it was a great surprise, or should have been a great surprise, that the city of New Orleans would flood. My wife wanted to know, what are we gonna pack? And I said, well, normally we pack for three days, but this time, you need to pack for 10 days. And that immediately scared her, and, and she said, why? And I said, by the way, you know what? You need to also bring business clothes, you need to pack school clothes uh, for our daughter, Gabrielle, because we may not have a home to come back to. You may not have a job. Your company may be destroyed. We need to plan ahead. Within 18 hours, we had evacuated our home. You take important items, precious items, mementos, keepsakes, family photos, the wedding albums, if you have a good marriage, we do, we brought the wedding album. <laughs> Whenever I talk about that, people will go, like, nudge themselves, the wedding album. Home movies, uh, business uh, documents are backed up, hard drives to all the computers. And I'm on the road going down the Mississippi Gulf Coast Highway, something that 36 hours later would just be annihilated. It wouldn't even exist. We're passing these stately mansions none of which are there anymore. They're all washed out to sea. And as I'm driving, I hear the mayor of New Orleans, Ray Nagin, come on the radio at four in the afternoon as I'm nearly at my safe destination. He says, now I'm not ordering a mandatory evacuation today, but I might be back tomorrow and be more forceful. And I know from the special report I did 15 years before that in order to evacuate the city, you need 64 hours. I had exactly 64 hours at 4 o'clock on Saturday, and I started my prep. I know it's going to be impossible to evacuate the city. That, my friends, is a picture of a leader or so-called leader, someone who is in a position of leadership but perhaps not exercising their leadership. But that is a picture of someone in sheer denial. Let's look at that picture one more time. This is at your doorstep, and you cannot make up your mind if you're going to order a mandatory evacuation. 
Let me let you look at another picture. You've probably heard the expression that denial ain't a river in Egypt. Have you ever heard that? Denial ain't a river in Egypt. As I watched everything unfold, people from around the country and around the world that I've worked with over the years were trying to contact me. They were checking to see if I was okay. And one of them asked me to participate in a blog for the International Association of Business Communicators. And this next slide shows you what I wrote in my first blog entry on, on August 30th. Denial ain't a river in Egypt, but it is a large lake in New Orleans. There were people who were stranded who didn't need to be stranded because they could have been evacuated. Now, the next principle of leadership that I mentioned was arrogance versus action. Arrogance versus action. I want to show you a picture of arrogance in play. This is a picture of more than 300 school buses that could have been used to evacuate the poor, the elderly, the indigent to get them out of town. And the next picture is a picture of several hundred city transit buses that were supposed to be used to take people safely out of town, all of which were left behind because of the arrogance of the mayor of the city who determined that was just one more thing he would have to do and he was going to override the emergency plan. <clears throat> the emergency plan said this. It said, the mayor of the city shall use school buses and public transit to evacuate the poor, the elderly, the indigent, those without transportation. Now later, Ray Nagin would say that he didn't have enough school bus drivers and he didn't have enough transit drivers because they didn't show up for work. It kind of goes to that whole safety issue, that whole planning issue. Maybe you need to rewrite your plan and realize there's a flaw in it, and that 72 hours before the crisis, the plan needs to say, all bus drivers shall be summoned to such and such a location to drive people, by, pe people out. In direct contrast to that community's failure to act is a man I consider a true man of action. His name is Benny Roussel. Benny Roussel is in one of the coastal parishes, Plaquemines Parish, and Benny, in his office, updates every year a three-ring binder with the names of all of the citizens who need transportation because they're poor or elderly or don't have their own transportation. And he sends his school buses out. He summons his drivers in early. And if a driver doesn't show up, you know what he does? He finds somebody who looks like they can drive a stick shift. Do you know how to drive stick shift? Yeah. Raise your hand. He deputizes them. He hands them a piece of paper. He says, go to these 12 homes, pick up these 12 families, then go to your house, pick up your family. Here's a map that will get you safely to a shelter that will house all of you away from danger. That is the difference between arrogance and action. When you live in denial and when you are arrogant, it then reflects down to your constituency in how they behave and they begin to blame. Would you like to see a photo of people who blame? Here's a picture of people who blame. These are people stuck on a rooftop made of hot black tar in August in New Orleans because either they were not responsible enough to take it upon themselves to evacuate and in part because they mimicked the behavior of their leaders who failed to see the urgency and to act. This is a picture of an old man walking down a railroad track, carrying his worldly belongings. All those people you watched on TV, at the convention center, and at the Superdome, that's all they had to do. This guy walked to safety. Safety was a half day's walk. You could have had food, and you could have had water if you had done what this gentleman did. Be responsible for yourself. So let's look at how this then ties into corporate behavior, because what I showed you was essentially a natural disaster and political behavior. 